welcome to Concrete Mouth Scrapboard with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today to show you how to make templates for English paper piecing using freezer paper. We've had a lot of questions asked about how do I make templates if I want to do English paper piecing because people are going well you can buy the hexes and all this stuff and other other shapes in the quilt stores but if you're coming up with a different shape how do you go about that so we're going to show you that today on the pattern that i've been playing around with now called argyle socks now, now this is just one of these fun little patterns that is just it's a cute little block that's all so we're we're going to do that but first but first lisa from lisa does a couple of weeks ago when we're filming this um, we're filming this in the first week of october she gave me a shout out a while ago and her channel is delightful so if you guys want to go check her out she doesn't know this shout out the return shout out is coming to her so go check her out and tell her that Con conquering mount scrapmore from uh, with brenda sent you there to her link and it'll be a nice little surprise for her and she, she's got some lovely, she's a very talented woman. From what I was able to see on her videos, I thought, yeah, let's, let's give her a shout out. That'll be good. Now, also in the show notes, you're going to find her YouTube link and our Facebook group. And it's growing rapidly. We're having lots of fun in there with the virtual sewing room and all the chats that are open, all the fabric swaps and all the questions that are being asked and all the quilts that are being shown. Everybody's having a good time. It's, it's a wonderful group to go to. It's a very welcoming community. So you come on in there if, you, if you're on Facebook. If not, the Zoom so dates, Zoom, not room, Zoom so dates are listed below where you can join, you know, from 8 or no, from 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, right? That's because Mountain Standard Time, I'm in Alberta. So that's where everybody if you're not part of Facebook you can still participate in a so date right so I mean they're lots of fun too and those late those dates are listed so have yourself ready just bring something simple and fun not the stuff that I'm showing on on my YouTube channel just stuff that's inspiring you I want to know what's going on with you and what's inspiring you so come on into those uh, those virtual sewing rooms share like and subscribe you help our analytics by commenting if all you've got time to do is put a heart out on your comment line that's perfect that will help us out imme immensely so tell your friends and all the rest of the stuff now speaking engagements i'm still doing them for free i'm having way too much fun and i get to stay for show and tell so that's something that we're doing, but we do them all over Zoom. So I don't travel and it doesn't cost the gills anything because I'm doing them for free. So are we ready to get going? Let's, I'll show you how to make some templates for English paper piecing using freezer paper. Okay, so here we are at the cutting table and we're gonna do an EPP uh, template. Now I've got my freezer paper now. The freezer paper sometimes is really hard to come by, but I mean, you can find it in most grocery stores. If you can't, the cool stores have a, pro, uh, a product very similar to this, so you might want to check with your local uh, quilt owner and say, okay, I need a product. Now, they're on freezer paper. There's a shiny side. You can see the shiny, and there's a dull side. What you want to do is you put shiny side to shiny side, right? And you just iron it with a hot iron very quick. And there we go. Okay, now it's glued together. And it's glued together for forever because the wax makes it shiny. So now the wax has melted together. So if, depending on what size you've made this, you could actually put it in through your computer printer I have never done that, so I'm not sure <laughs> if that would work or not. But, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can't get two out of here. Oh, yes, I can. Now, once you iron this together, it stays pretty nice. Like, it's a firm product, and you don't need, you don't need a lot of work here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my tracing wheel. My tracing wheel. And, oops, I need this off of the ironing pad. Hang on. Okay, so I line everything up again. Sorry, guys. 
I was gonna put it through. It would never have worked. Okay, so my tracing wheel, I'm just gonna press down. And you're gonna do all the lines that go this way first. And there we go. Now you're gonna spin it and go the lines that do the other line. Now you don't have a seam allowance on this because you're gonna cut this apart and wrap fabric around it. Now it's up to you whether you thread based or you know you do some other other thing that you're, makes you happy. There we go. And then we just wanna mark off all these lines. But yeah, you can you can make your own EPP patterns very quickly. Oops, I went a little off. It's okay, now give it another spin. You want to make sure you get the other lines. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. Oops, get here first. Now it kind of gets pushed in. The paper actually gets kind of pushed into the the freezer paper, which is good because it's a good stabilizer. You know, it stabilizes everything. Okay. Now, I think I've got all of this done. So just flip it over. Now you can see the dots. I'm hoping you guys can see the dots on here from my tracing wheel. So, you now have your, your thing. You pull this off, and now you have something to cut. So, you just start cutting on the line where the tracing wheel was. Remember, on English paper piecing, you're wrapping your fabric around the edge. Now, like all EPP projects, the outside corners, I mark... Um, I, I overcut, I make them bigger because then when I'm taking the papers out I can just go through and cut out uh, I two at a time my, my. so what I do now is I can cut out like the rest of this, which I will but it doesn't take long to cut out but I make the outside fabric bigger than needed Right, so that the first one, like this, and you just take your time, and the second piece is like this. Now it's up to you. There's thread basting, and there is um, the other one, thread basting and glue basting. That's personal preference. As to which way you want to go, I always have junk thread around here, and glue basting tends to be expensive. So I don't do a lot of glue basting. So, yeah. Okay, there we go, just about there. Now there's a lot of Y seams in this pattern. But with English paper piecing, it doesn't matter. So what I do now is I just lay it out. I reassemble the pieces. Because, because we have a, a one way and a reverse. So I now post my colors that I'm going to put on here. So uh, one low volume, low volume, two low volume, three, low volume, four, uh, C1, five, C1, six, uh, C2, that's the second color, seven, and C2, eight. So now I know how I'm lining them up, 
right? And I know what color they're going to be wrapped in. So this makes this task all very, very simple. And like I say, it's up to you to thread based. I always have junk threads, so I'm happy to thread base. Uh, glue, you can use Elmer's school glue too, but when you're gluing, you have to decide which way you're gonna wrap your fabric, whether it's gonna be on the side without the mark or with the mark, right? And you just do them all the same. But don't glue like within that one eighth of the edge. You don't, don't put glue there because you're only going to put enough glue to hold the fabric until you sew it together, right? But, and otherwise it's too hard to sew together. So this is how you make uh, templates for English paper piecing. And this comes together very quickly and it's kind of cute. So let us know what you think. Let's get to our ta-da moment. So that's how you make a pattern for English paper piecing. This is really simple, like a very simple thing to do. I mean, I don't, I am not the original one who put, you know, decided to put freezer paper, you know, waxy sides together, iron it and start drawing on it. This, this is not my original idea. This, however, is the perfect weight for English paper piecing when you do that. It is just light, it's flexible and everything. And you have a choice now of using thread basting to move your pieces around or glue basting. It's totally up to you on how you want to do that. I always have junk thread around, so I'm, uh, you know, big hands on, you know, let's do it by thread basting because that way it moves up and out of my sewing room. And it's very quick. I do recommend that if you're using out, uh, the outside pieces, these pieces here, like when you're making outside, make the fabric just a little bit bigger than you need to because then if something goes awry, you have room to trim it down, right? Because if you're, all of your outside pieces are just a little lengthier, or a little leggier, then you've got room to trim down your block to a standard size, right? And that's, you know, that, that uh, that's pretty much standard advice from anything, you know, like paper, English paper piecing is very precision. But it, you know, it's also really quite, you know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta play with the edges, right? Why seams on English paper piecing, just like hand piecing, there's no issue. The hardest part about Y seams is with a sewing machine. So if you're doing the EPP, this is not, it's flexible, this stuff is flexible enough it bends really easy while you're doing your Y seam, right? So that you're not gonna have like something too stiff to be working with and trying to uh, whip stitch your, your, your pieces together from the back. So anyways, I do hope you try this Argyle socks by, by doing it by English paper piecing. It's a fun little block. It's only eight pieces and it ends up kind of, you know, this cute, funky little, you know, do you remember the Argyle socks you used to wear? Well, this is it. So. Until we meet again, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week ahead and life just treats you very kindly and very gently. Okay, take care until we meet again. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, on their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay. Goodbye.